This is Steven Strogatz. He's a professor of mathematics at Cornell University and the author of some great math books. I read and loved his book Infinite Powers years ago, and lately I've been reading through his older book The Joy of X. And in one section of this book, he tells the story of the first word problem he was ever given and how he got it wrong when he was 10 or 11 years old. I want to show you that problem, see how how a lot of people get it wrong and how you can get it right. He says that his uncle posed this problem to him and perhaps he remembers it because he was embarrassed to get it wrong. If you look it up online, you can find lots of people struggling with problems similar to this one. Here it is. If the cold water faucet can fill the tub in half an hour and the hot water faucet can fill it in one hour, how long will they take to fill the tub if they're running together? So the cold water takes half an hour, the hot water takes a full hour, how long to fill the tub if they're running together? What do you think? A lot of people will quickly consider the times in their head and figure if both of the faucets are running, then the correct answer can be found by splitting the difference between half an hour and a full hour, arriving at an answer of 45 minutes to fill the tub if the cold and hot faucets are running together. And this is the answer that Professor Strogatz offered at such a young age. So how is it that people so often arrive at this incorrect answer? Well, one possibility is that the reasoning used to arrive at this answer would be valid in some other similar but different contexts. For example, suppose it takes a student four minutes to solve a quadratic equation, but he has a peer tutor who can solve quadratic equations in only two minutes. If the tutor helps out the student and they're working together through a quadratic equation, how long would it take them to solve one? A reasonable answer would be three minutes, just splitting the difference. The tutor slows down a little bit to help out the student, and the student can finish it a little bit more quickly with the tutor's help. A big difference with the faucet problem, though, is that the two faucets don't affect each other. Although perhaps it's worth mentioning that that's one of those simplifying assumptions for the sake of answering the problem. In reality, two faucets running simultaneously, presumably from the same source, would impact each other's rates, but for the sake of simplicity, we suppose that's not the case. So just on gut instinct, splitting the difference and saying 45 minutes feels reasonable. One could also just quickly see some equations in their head for this situation. 60 minutes of the hot faucet running will fill the tub, and 30 minutes of the cold faucet running will fill the tub. Now, if they're both running, you could add both equations together to get 90x equals, well, you would fill two tubs in that amount of time. And so dividing both sides by two, we would see that 45 minutes of both faucets running together would fill the tub once. The error here, of course, is that x is representing the flow rate, but we would need different variables because the flow rate of the hot faucet is different from the flow rate for the cold faucet the cold faucet runs faster. So using one variable here is not correct, thus we get a wrong answer. Even if you don't take time to examine the logical errors of this solution, it's clear that it's an absurd answer. The problem already told us that the cold faucet, all on its own, fills the tub in half an hour. So there's no way that the cold faucet running with an additional faucet is going to take longer than half an hour, that wouldn't make any sense. Since the cold faucet alone takes 30 minutes, we know that the mysterious time we're looking for can't be any more than 30 minutes. And we also know that if it was two cold faucets running together, well, since each one can fill a whole tub in half an hour, if there were two of them running together, they could fill a single tub twice as fast. So they could actually fill a single tub in 15 minutes if it was two cold faucets running together. Of course, our time we're looking for is going to be bigger than that because we have a cold faucet and a slower hot faucet. So from a couple pieces of simple reasoning, we know that the correct answer is between 15 and 30. Although it's easy to get the problem wrong, it's also very easy to get the problem right. So all of this analysis isn't really necessary, but it just goes to show that you can eliminate some absurd solutions with a little bit of careful thought, which is really useful with more challenging problems. So then, what is the correct solution to this faucet? tub problem? Well, it's very easy if we think about the faucets and their running rates per 
minute. We know that the cold water faucet fills up the whole tub in half an hour. Thus, each minute, it fills up 1 30th of the tub. Similarly, since it takes the hot water faucet an hour to fill up the tub, ignore the scribble, it fills up 1 60th of the tub every minute. Then we can simply add these rates together to get the per minute tub filling rate when the cold and the hot are both running simultaneously. So we're adding the flow rates of the faucets together to get common denominators, we can multiply 1 30th by 2 over 2, so it becomes 2 over 60. That's the flow rate of the cold water plus that 1 over 60 for the hot water. In total, we get 3 over 60, which can be reduced to 1 over 20. That means that each minute, the cold and the hot water together will fill up 1 20th of the tub. Since that's how much is filled each minute, it will take 20 minutes total to fill up the tub when the cold and the hot water faucets are running. When you're solving problems that deal with rates, turning them into unit rates like this per minute instead of 60 minutes to fill a tub and 30 minutes to fill a tub, this can be a really useful strategy. However, mathematics is a very creative field and it's always fun to see a more artful solution to a problem. In his book, Stephen Strogatz describes what he came up with as a very elegant way to come to this answer. He says to imagine two conveyor belts. One is taking tubs through the cold water faucet and the other is taking tubs through the hot hot water faucet. A tub will sit here getting filled up. For the cold water faucet, it would take 30 minutes. Then it would move on, all filled up with water, and the next tub in line would move on. Same thing with the hot water. A tub will sit here. In this case, it'll take 60 minutes. Once it's filled up, it will move on, and then the next tub comes into place. So then we simply ask, how many tubs have passed through after 60 minutes? So we're looking at how many tubs the cold and the hot water faucets can fill up when running together in 60 minutes, but we're not requiring them to flow into the same tub, which is part of what causes some confusion with the problem. Well, after 60 minutes, the cold water on its own, we know, could fill up two tubs, because it fills up one tub every 30 minutes. After 60 minutes, on the other hand, the hot water faucet, well, that's how long it takes up to fill exactly one tub. So after 60 minutes, the cold and the hot water faucets running together would fill exactly three tubs. So how long to fill up one tub if they're running together? Well, just divide 60 by 3, thus again we get 20. So that first solution looked at the flow rates per minute. This, I think, more elegant solution looks at the tub filling rate per hour. Per hour, the faucets together fill three tubs, so every 20 minutes, they fill one tub. Of course, the advantage of looking per hour instead of per minute is that we avoid any messy fractions. Not that that's a big obstacle, but this is still a nice solution. I'm always amused by clever solutions to simple problems and fun math anecdotes. And now you know the clever solution that Steven Strogatz came up with to solve the first word problem he was ever given. It's amazing how much these early moments in our development can leave an impression on us. You can try this problem out on your friends and see how they go about solving it. And if you want to check out some of Stephen Strogatz's books, I'll leave links in the description. Also check out mathshin.com for the coolest math clothes ever created. And be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet. I'm unstable, I'm doing art to keep the cable cut and untucked the table If Texas instruments don't reply, I think this time it might be fatal I Wish to sell my own fake, cause I'm jaded Hate the odds that I calculated Press and pull and pray and push it all the way through the whole blue planet faded Psychosomatic habits, why you so, so